Andy Ben is facing the first batter of the game, Reggie Sanders, and Reggie goes deep. His 10th of the season, his third leadoff shot. Just like that, Reds up early, one zip. Top of the seventh, Pokey Reese on second. More from Reggie Sanders through the hole. Sanders went three for four with two ribbies. Cincinnati on top, three nothing. Top of the eighth, nobody on for Sean Casey. And the Reds, first baseman. This is his first major league home run. Opposite field. That put Cincinnati up 5-0. And that run would prove to be important. Bottom of the ninth. The new closer for Cincinnati, Danny Graves, in to close it out. He came in up 5-0. Finds trouble up 5-2. Travis Lee, his 18th home run. A two-run shot makes it 5-4. And that's the way it ends as Graves gets the next batter to ground out. 5-4, the final. Brett Tomko with seven shutout innings to win his fourth straight start. The Reds have won five in a row, ten of their last 11. And Been on a tear. They started the night with five wins in a row. And the trade rumors keep on flying about shortstop Barry Larkin. The latest scenario has Larkin going to the San Diego Padres straight up for pitcher Joey Hamilton. But the game last night against Arizona, Larkin was wondering if he's going to be a red much longer. But after this play, nobody will doubt he still has the right stuff. He gets to the grounder, makes the throw, and off balance to nail the runner at first. That may go down as one of the best plays of the year. Paul Konerko made his first start last night for the Reds, and he made it a special one by pounding that pitch to dead center field for a home run, his fifth of the year, his first for the Reds. And then it's more Barry Larkin. He will add a two-run home run in the top of the eighth, and then later in the ninth, same batter, same result. Boom, another shot. This one good for three runs. It's eight-zip Reds, and that is all they would need. Mike Remlinger gets the shutout, the second of his career, and the Reds have won six in a row. There are about six or eight teams that are interested. There was one so three-way deal with San Diego. The Padres wanted to get him, move Joey Hamilton to Detroit, and get uh, outfielder Juan Encarnacion to go from Detroit to Cincinnati. Looks like the Tigers may not do that because they're so far out. Randy Smith can sign a free agent at the end of the year. Doesn't have to give up a top prospect. That said, I mean, you've got the Dodgers. You've got the Red Sox. You've, you've got... Um, the Phillies, you've got St. Louis, you've got a number of teams, and especially the Angels, interested in, in Harnish right now. Jim Bowden's been trying to sign him. Two years, $6 million total. Harnish wants to stay in Cincinnati, but the thing is, he's not going to do, not going to get like Jeff Shaw, sign for the hometown discount, and then end up in L.A. So he wants two years, $8 million if he's going to be traded. If it doesn't get done in the next two days, he will be traded. Coming into tonight's game with Arizona, the Reds have won 11 of their last 12 games and a season-high six straight. In the first, Barry Larkin trying to make it seven in a row. He rolls a double down the left field line to plate Reggie Sanders, and that gives the Reds a 1-0 lead. In the second, new rud Paul Canerco lashes a laser shot over the center fielder's head. But on the play, the Reds' good luck charm Pokey Reese has his hamstring tighten up. Pokey would limp on home to make a two-zip, but he had to leave the game. He's listed as day-to-day. -day. Meanwhile, Jim Jim Bowden was... Taking in the game, dreaming up more trades. Word on the street is that this could be the last start for Pete Harnish, who gets some good help as Brett Boone makes the nice stop and flips to Larkin. The defense is contagious. Larkin makes the barehanded pickup and nails the runner at first. The wheels fell off for Harnish in the fourth. Reggie Sanders can't track down this smash by Tony to Batista to center. Two runs would score on the play, and we're all tied at two. The Reds get a scare in the seventh when Kareem Garcia collides with catcher Brooke Fordyce. Fordyce held on for the out, but he had to leave the game. No word yet on his condition. Reds were down 3-2 to two in the eighth when Barry Larkin sends an airmail delivery over the wall and right for homer number nine on the year to tie the game. And Paul Canerico has just added a two-run blast in the ninth. The Reds right now lead this game 5-3 to three in the top of the Thanks. In sports this morning, we'll begin with the Reds, the Red Hot Reds, who have won 12 of their last 13 games. They were in Arizona last night going for the sweep of the Diamondbacks. We'll take you to the eighth. Reds down 3-2. Barry Larkin hammers one down the field. The right field line, that ball is out of here. Man, remember that guy the Reds picked up from the Dodgers in the Jeff Shaw trade? Here he is. Paul Canerco homered Saturday night. He does it again last night, and this one, folks, was the game winner. He cranks it way into the seats and left. The Reds get out of town with a three-game sweep. That as in eight wins in a row. During this streak, the Reds have shown some intestinal fortitude that was lacking earlier in the season. In the first inning, the Reds get half of a fine play here. Look at Brett Boone behind the back to Larkin. There's the force, but a tough play and a bad throw to first goes into the dugout. Later in the first inning, former Red Ron Gant 
And there it goes, a two-run homer, and the Cardinals take a two-to-nothing lead in the first inning. In the second inning, an interesting play. Royce Clayton squares the bunt, watch the ball, smacking right in the nose. But Clayton stays in the game. Now on the very next pitch, Clayton does not get mad. He gets even. It's out of here. The Cardinals take a five to nothing lead over the Reds. But as I said, these Reds are showing something. They battle back. Ninth inning, one out, man on third. Larkins fly ball to right. Mike Frank breaks for home. He's going to make it. The Reds tie it up, and it is still tied five to five. They are playing in the bottom of the 10th inning. In with the hottest team in baseball, the Reds. They are hotter than those new jalapeno chips out on the market. The Reds were down 4 nothing after an inning and 5-zip before they started to turn it all around in St. Louis last night. We'll take you now to the top of the ninth. The Reds down one. Barry Larkin lifts one to right field off of former Red Jeff Brantley. That will score Mike Frank with the sacrifice fly. It's all tied up at five. Two extra innings we go. Eduardo Perez, the guy we haven't heard a lot from of late with the RBI single up the middle. The Reds take a 6-5 lead. Brett Boone scores in the bottom of the 13th. The Reds gave wide on the mound. Look at this pitch. Couldn't touch it if he tried. Strike three is the call. The Reds win 6-5. Eight wins in a row for the Reds. 13 of the last 14 come in the win column. <laughs> this is crazy. My mind is blown. The big <laughs> red machine revisited. Well, you know what they're calling themselves now? The, the little red machine. <laughs> the little red wagon. <laughs> That's what they're calling. The Reds are calling themselves. I'll tell you what, they must have nine lives. The formerly sorry as you know what Reds have a nine game winning streak. That matches their longest streak since 1975. Why well, things are so good. Barry Larkin is making peace with the general manager. Second inning, the Reds get five consecutive hits and they score just one run. I don't think I've ever seen that before. On Demetri Young's single, Willie Green runs right into an out. The Reds did that a couple times and as I said, five hits, one run, doesn't figure. Fourth inning, Gary Gaetti launches a bomb. Demetri Young at the fence and he gets sort of up. That's a two run homer. St. Louis takes the lead. The Reds start coming back. Young at the bat. He hits it deep to left field. Gant back and whoa, that was worse than Young. A home run. Mark McGuire could only watch. He was not in the lineup tonight. It was tied at four in the seventh, two outs, a full count. Eddie Tobinsey, and he cranks it. A three run homer. The Reds beat the Cardinals seven to four. That's 14 wins out of 15 games, nine in a row. The little red wagon is rolling on the former Red, but he's rooting for the Cardinals. Now he's their hitting instructor. He had to like this. Former Red Ron Gantz sticking one up the middle. That drives home a run. The Cardinals build a two to nothing lead. Dave did like it. The Reds were held scoreless until the sixth. They have the bases loaded. Demetri Young at the plate. He doesn't have to swing the bat. That's ball four. That drives home Paul Canerco. It's two to one St. Louis. It was still two to one Cardinals in the eighth inning. The Reds with a pinch hitter at the plate and Reggie Sanders on second. Melvin Nieves comes through with the pinch single. Reggie Sanders scores. This game is tied at two. The top of the ninth. Paul Canerco at the plate. The Reds looking to get something going, but he pops it up. A couple of Cardinals converge, but nobody wants it. Canerco is safe at first. Well, the Reds fail to advance him. Eddie Tobinsey tries to bunt him over. The Cardinals don't blow this pop up. The Cards had a rally going in the bottom of the ninth, but Gabe White put out the fire. It is now 2-2 two to two in the top of the 10th. Louis, we pick things up in St. Louis, top of the 7th. St. Louis up 2-1, two, to one. two men on for Eddie Tobinsee. Rips one down the first baseline. Mark McGuire dives and crawls to make the out. Top of the 7th, McGuire up against Denny Graves, and Big Mac hammers one, and Brett Boone gloves it and gets knocked over. Had McGuire, the impressed, and salutes Boone, and then right back at you, tough guy. Single and three at bats for McGuire. Top of the eighth card, still up by one man on for Melvin Nieves. Reggie Sanders come on down. We're now tied at two. Bottom of the ninth, Jack McKean intentionally walks McGuire to put men on first and second. Puts the winning run in scoring position he doesn't want to face, Big Mac. Next batter, Ray Langford, a 3-0 pitch. What do you call this one? Jerry Crawford oh, calls it a strike. strike Next pitch, make... Langford grounds to Boone. Yeah, a weak ground ball to second. We are headed to, to end the threat. 
Carney Lansford displeased still with Crawford's call. You know what? I think Carney got the gate. I think somebody has halitosis. He did. Top of the 11th, two men on for Boone, who hits one in the hole. It's short. Royce Clayton goes to first. Boone slides and saves. Sean Casey coming around trying to score, and Big Max throw is errant. Two runs come on in, and the Reds win 4-2 to two in 11 innings. So the Reds sweep the three-game series, coming from behind in each of the wins. They've won 10 in a row overall, their longest streak since 1975. They've completed their first 6-0 trip since April of 90. They've won 10 straight on the road, and I... Smell it, did you know? The one silver cardinal lining starter, Matt Morris, allowed a run in six innings. The Didn't seem any too impressed that the Reds had won 10 straight and 15 out of 16. Heck, the streak was darn near over before the Reds had a chance to bat. We go to the top of the first inning. Greg Vaughn slugs it. A three-run homer. That goes into the yellow seats. Vaughn later hit one into the red seats. He now has 32 for the season. In the fourth inning, it gets worse. Bases loaded. And there it goes. Ruben Rivera, a grand slam. The Padres build a 9-2 lead. Tony Gwynn had seven home runs coming into this game. He cranks two of them against the Reds. The Padres beat up Cincinnati pitching for five home runs. They win at 13-3. The 10-game winning streak is shattered. I guess Reds starting pitcher Mike Rimlinger just didn't have it tonight. <laughs> well, I'll drink to that. <laughs> <laughs> that's baseball. I mean, that's that's why we keep playing, even when people say that we're no good, and, and you know, why when things are going bad and, and people wonder what are you doing out here, and that's just the way the game works. And uh, unfortunately, you know, it was a perfect example tonight for me. Thinking about Ted Klususki, because for all of his size and for all of his massive success on the baseball field, he was unassuming. He was quiet. And he was a gentleman every waking moment of the day. The Klazuski family was given choice seats tonight, almost too good as that relative was nearly boinked on the head by a foul pop-up. The Padres scored first in the third. Tony Gwynn's slump is over. His single to write off Pete Harnish made it one nothing pods. Then in the fourth, one word, 13 letters. Forget about it. Greg Vaughn's third home run in the last two nights is 33rd this season, two zip pods. The Reds kept San Diego to two thanks to that great defensive play by Brent Boone. Give him a gold glove now. The Reds finally got on the board in the sixth. Sean Casey, who had two doubles tonight, ripping that one to bring home Reggie Sanders. That made it 2-1. The Reds were able to get Casey to third base after his double, but with two out, Paul Canerco could not get him home as his grounder up the middle was fielded by Varis. That was as close as the Reds came as they lost to the Padres again, 2-1. Tonight was one of those nights where we couldn't cash in. We had, you know, many uh, golden opportunities. Uh, men on third base, one out, and here comes that old strikeout again. And, you know, we got we to gotta start uh, cashing in. Ready for zip San Diego. Greg Vaughn off Scott Sullivan. Watch where this thing goes. His fourth of the series, 6 nothing Padres, and it's... His 34th of the year for Vaughn. Bottom two, man on Eduardo Perez. You talk about liftoff. This is an upper deck. Lands in the red seats. Watch Barry Larkin's reaction. Oh, which is exactly what everyone said when Peter was doing the back handsprings in the newsroom. All right, Guillermo Garcia to right center. His second major league at bat. It was juiced at Synergy Field at 6-5, and Boshi says it was 6-zip at one point, wasn't it? Time for Larkin, Peter. It's just great to see him healthy. He's over the trade of Lenny Harris. Got the C back in his uniform, which he took off when Harris was traded. There makes a terrific play in the hole. Then he comes up, down one run, line drive into right field. Great news for Cincinnati. He wants to stay no matter what now. That's good news. And he went two for five in the game. It's 6-6 six, six in the eighth. Kilvio Varis. It's a double play ball. You don't see this very often. Boone in a hurry to get rid of it. Usually Larkin catches everything. A Gwyn sack fly made it 7-6. And then Trevor Hoffman with Larkin. Looking him down. Looking at the ball over the outside corner. His 30th save, all he did, Peter, was throw 11 pitches. Nine of them were for strikes. Talk about efficient. 7-6, San Diego winner over the Reds. Cincinnati, Trevor Hoffman.
Looking for the win. Bottom three, no score. Wilton Guerrero loops one to right. Brett Boone back. Why was he an all-star? Why is he maybe the best defensive second baseman in the National League? That's why. His dad, eh, just another day for my kid. Bottom four, no score. Raul Mondesi versus Paris. Broken bat fly ball out toward left center. Dimitri Young, Reggie Sanders both charging. And Reggie Laverne Sanders holds on. Reggie making up for an 0-4 for day at the plate. Willie Green. Grounder up the middle. Wilton Guerrero can't hold on. Juan Castro, nice spin. Castro making up for an 0 for 3 day at the plate. Great defense. Bottom seven, no score. Two on, two out. Adrian Beltre representing a line drive to left. Mondesi comes around to score. Beltre, just a 217 hitter, gets just his seventh RBI this year. Top nine, Dodgers up two zip. Jeff Shaw brought in to face his old team after Darren Dreifert allowed just one hit. Said Dreifert, it's a save situation. We've got the best closure in the NL. That's why we run them out. Nieves, Sanders, Casey, you'll take that and you'll like it. Dodgers win it two zip. Darren Dreifert gets the win, a one hit shutout. Jeff Shaw, his third save with LA. Shaw has retired 18 of 20 batters faced since being acquired by the Dodgers. Cincinnati's 10 game road winning streak is now Chavez Ravine. Pete Harn is chilling in the dugout after signing his new contract. More on that shortly. Man on for Adrian Beltre. Ah, holla at him, brother. Towering shot off Brett Tomko, the 222 hitter. Home run number two on the year for Beltre. Two zip Dodgers. Man on second for Gary Sheffield. Bottom three. Chef singles to left. Raul. Mondesi comes around and scores. Dimitri Young's throw goes wide. Chef RBI number 68 in the year. Three zip Dodgers. Ishmael Valdez getting some defensive help behind him. Top six. Juan Castro, second night in a row. He makes a great play. Also, second night in a row. He goes 0 for 3 at the plate. Top seven, four, two Dodgers. Bases loaded for Dimitri Young facing Scott Radinsky. Right at Eric Carroll's ending the threat. Top nine, it's Jeff Shaw time. Pokey Reese, right back to Shaw. Shaw's retired 22 of 24 batters since joining the Dodgers. Reds go down and they go down hard. Four to two. The Reds have dropped five straight since winning 10 in a row. Ishmael Valdez won consecutive starts for the first time since last August. Now, more on the new contract. According to ESPN's Peter Gammons, just as the Red Sox and Padres thought a three-way deal was going to be consummated, Reds President John Allen agreed to Pete Harnish's request and signed him to a two-year, $7 million deal with an option. In 99, Harnish will get $3 million. The year 2000, $3.25 million. And the year after that, $4.25 million. Harnish cannot be traded until the end of the season. But if he is traded, after that, he gets $4 million for 99, $4.25 for the year 2000, and $4.25 for the year 2001. GM Jim Bowden had set a deadline of the end of the week to either sign or trade Harnish. The Padres and Bosox thought a deal that would have sent Harnish to San Diego, Joey Hamilton to Boston, and a couple of minor leaguers to Cincinnati would happen. It did not. Ten in a row. Now they lost five in a row facing the Rockies today. And Todd Helt sends it high and deep. And Aloha means goodbye off of Danny Graves. 17 for Helton, 6 0 Colorado, still 6 0 in the eighth. Paul Canerco, the guy the Reds got from the Dodgers, former minor league player of the year, three run shot, ending Colorado's scoreless inning streak at a team record 16 frames. Now a 6 3 game. Sean Casey in the eighth. Sean, that was only ball three. Sean, <laughs> let's, let's go back. Let's get your bat. Sorry. Later in the eighth, Barry Larkin's on at first. Now a 6 4 game. Eddie Tobinzi. Soft ground ball. Vinny Castilla starts the double play. And the Rockies go on to win it 6 to 4. That was game one of a day night doubleheader. Vinny Castilla, he is sizzling. Two for three in this game, hitting 438 with six homers and 15 RBIs in 12 games since the All Star game. Larry Walker, three for three. And you saw Helton, one for two, his 17th homer. Because of the rain out yesterday, they were in the position of having to suffer through one of those day-night doubleheaders. Pete Harnish started tonight's game for the Reds. Here we go, Barry Larkin on the run. Can he get there? Of course he can. But Harnish does make a mistake with two outs, Dante Bichette, and there it goes. A man aboard a two-run homer. That gives the Rockies a 2-0 lead. Tonight's game then hit a rain delay after the second inning. They have just resumed. Again, the Reds trailing two zip. In the early game, Dimitri Young with a shoulder injury and to make sure it's hurting, the coaches beat on it. Seventh inning, Todd Helton with a two-run homer off Danny Graves. That gives the Rockies a six-to-nothing lead, but that's not exactly safe out in that thin air. In the eighth, the Reds get it going. Paul Canerco 
with a three run bomb to straightaway center field his seventh home run. The Reds are down by just two and well that's the way it ended. The Reds lose by two six to four Rockies get a sweep and they do it by identical open their own ride at Kings Island. This roller coaster ride makes the beast look weak. The Reds drop both ends of a day night doubleheader in Colorado yesterday. Pete Harnish allows two home runs. Larry Walker hammers this one. The Rockies win the game last night six to four. That is seven straight losses tonight at San Fran the, the, for the Reds. Tonight they're at San Francisco. Scott Winchester is on the mound. The NCAA. The only good news inside is that the Reds came to town on Friday and since he hoping to snap a seven game losing streak. What would give? Would it be newly acquired Joe Carter starting in right field for the Giants? Bottom one, two outs. Barry Bonds on first base. Jeff Kent facing Scott Winchester. Look out. Kent hits a two run shot to left. Number 10 on the season. Giants lead 2 0. Bottom four, 6 0. Giants, two on base with Jeff Kent on deck. Bonds facing Winchester. And Winchester intentionally walks Bonds to load the bases and face Kent again. And then he makes a bad mistake. If you're going to walk somebody to face somebody, don't throw it like that. 11th home run of the season, a grand slam, ring the bell. Kent with a career high seven RBIs on the game. The Giants win it by a final of 12 to 2. The Reds lost their eighth in a row following a 10 game winning streak. Mark Gardner scattered five hits in eight innings. The seven ribbies by Kent were the most by a Giants player since Barry Bonds did it. He had seven in 93.